Okay, looks like we are live on Facebook and we are live on TikTok. Welcome everyone. Tonight's topic that we're going to be talking about is to change or not to change. That is the question. So if this is your first time joining me, my name is Tina. I am a happiness coach. I help people deal with feelings of depression, anxiety, dark thoughts, suicidal thoughts, anything that you are struggling with um, where you feel stuck, that you're having challenges dealing with the emotions with whatever life may be throwing at you. And life usually throws a lot of stuff. And oftentimes we end up feeling like we have these tornado of emotions and being able to anchor ourselves down and be able to battle those emotions so that we are not being destructive in our lives is key. So oftentimes we think that if other people change, then everything is going to be awesome, right? And we'll be able to fix everything and we won't have the problems that we're dealing with. And it can be easy to get stuck in that kind of situation where we think, well, if so-and-so wouldn't do this, then I would be just fine. They are the problem. If I was able to get my relationship back, if I hadn't lost my job, if I hadn't done whatever, fill in the blank, there will be challenges that we deal with in life. And sometimes we don't know if, well, do, you know what, do I take this new job? Do I leave my relationship? Do I start a new relationship? Do I cut out those family members? Do I try to make it work? What is it that I need to do? What do I need to change? And sometimes we get stuck in the emotions of things that it becomes very unclear as to what we need to do and it becomes a real challenge for us and we can feel stuck we can feel depressed we can feel anxious not knowing what it is we need to change or even how to actually make those changes so um, here's a couple of things that I use and when I share this stuff I share from my actual personal experiences so a lot of times I will dip into stories of things that I've done, things that have happened to me. Sometimes these are personal stories, sometimes they're more work-related stories, um, and they apply in any situation. So my hope for you today is to be able to take away something that you can actually apply and implement to your personal life or in your business to be able to make some changes or maybe decide that a change isn't necessary. So. Uh, change management is actually the process of managing the people side of change, the emotional side of change, because you can implement a system or uh, a process or, you know, following these five steps and everything's going to be perfect. But if you don't deal with the emotional side of things, if you don't deal with people and connecting with them in an authentic way, you become really resistant, the changes don't actually take hold, and oftentimes people will either revert back to problematic behavior. So how to deal with people resistant to change, that is an amazing question. I love that. Um, so here's the thing. People that are resistant to change, um, first of all, they don't understand it of what's in it for them. They are fearful, um, and if they're in a state of fear, they're going to be resistant to the change. And that usually comes down to lack of communication as to why the change would be important for them to do. Uh, girl, I needed this when I was a kid. Wish that this was available. Yeah, uh, and this is exactly why I'm sharing this stuff here is because these are tools that I wish I had and I wish I was able to actually make these changes and I want to be able to provide that. My goal is to be able to help a million people heal past trauma and I do this based on the information that I have learned over the years and I've done over 10 years of therapy, um, both one-on-one -on -one individual therapy, I've done uh, group therapy, I've done all kinds of things 
uh, in growth challenges. Hey, Mark, good to see you. Welcome back. Um, and these things are tools that I've actually used and I still use today. And when I went through a really challenging time the last two years, even though I had all of this information, I had to uh, dust off my toolbox that I hadn't used for quite a while and I had to start learning to apply these to the new situation. And the good thing is, is these tools are usable no matter what stage in life, whatever challenges that you're facing, and it doesn't matter which um, diagnosis that you've been given, whether it's ADHD, bipolar, um, personality disorders, you have autism, any of these things, or if you're neuro neurotypical, <laughs> guess what? These tools can actually still be used regardless of your situation, because even if you're neurotypical, you're probably going to be dealing with somebody who has dealt with some sort of challenges. And whatever label or diagnosis somebody's been through or has been given, whether it's um, a biochemical issue or it's a mindset issue or um, trauma issue, those kind of things, myself, it's complex PTSD. I believe that these things can actually be applied to anybody and you can use these tools regardless of your religion, regardless of your personal circumstances to be able to help shift you into a more positive mindset, uh, to be able to deal with life regardless of the challenges that you're actually experiencing because not all challenges are actually bad. Even the painful ones have their purpose and being able to shift your perspective in a way that you can see this from a different viewpoint um, allows you to navigate through life in a happier way. So the first step of whatever problems that you're facing is dealing with a level of acceptance and getting to a level of acceptance. It's actually most of the pain that we feel is that we are denying or we want our current reality to be something different than what it actually is. And that is usually because we have some sort of pain that is being created by the circumstances that we're facing, whether we lost a relationship, we lost a job, um, somebody passed away. The pain that we are feeling is because we wish that the circumstances that we are in were different than what they are. So the first step is acknowledging that we wish that it was different. It is not. And we have to come to a certain level of acceptance of knowing that the circumstances that we are in are less than ideal. They are causing us pain. And, um, you know, this is something that we can choose to there's two paths really that we end up going down is one, we could go through shifting our perspective. So if it's something that's more of a minor annoyance, maybe somebody does something um, that is driving you crazy. They, um, I'm trying to think of a little example that uh, maybe, you know, somebody that is say they're a chronic complainer and they're always complaining about something. And it drives you crazy to have to friggin' listen to them. And they're like, oh my God, they're these energy vampires. Like, you know, they, they just drain your energy and it's exhausting to be around them. And you could view it from that perspective. And you could be like, you know, man, this person's always complaining. I just feel so exhausted every time I'm around them and it takes me a while to recharge. You could go down that path or you could choose to shift your perspective around it, except that they are a chronic complainer, um, not try to change them, not try to wish that they were any other way than exactly who they are and shift your perspective to see how can I actually benefit from this person who complains all the freaking time? What can I do to see this in a positive way? How can this actually benefit me? And when you, you accept them exactly how they are, 
and that they don't actually have to change anything, that is so freeing for you. And um, you start to see things in a different perspective. You start to see things in a different light. And when you're like, this person doesn't actually have to change anything about themselves they're fine exactly the way they are. Maybe you wouldn't want to operate in that way. But when we shift our perspective, now what that does is it frees us from being irritated by their chronic complaining. We don't have to take that personally. Now, here's the thing. It's great to be able to, ah, it's not that important. I'll just let it go. I'll just let it go. Ah, you know what? Um, it's, it doesn't really bother me. Right? We have to be careful there because the thing is, is somebody who is a chronic complainer, they're in your energy. They are there to help you with something. And um, that can be hard to look at because usually the person that's a problem comes in at like, you know, the volume level is at 10. And we're just like, oh, my God, they're so annoying. Ah, you know, if I had force choke powers, I would be able to, <laughs> I would be hard pressed not to use those, right, in that particular situation. So when you look at that, yes, you can choose to let it go, just see it in a different uh, perspective and accept things as they are. But I would invite you, I challenge you to actually take it a step further. And ask yourself, why does that bother me so much? Why, is, why do I actually find that so irritating? Where am I actually doing this in my life? Where am I being a chronic complainer? Where am I bitching and moaning and not doing anything about the, the situation? Because this person has shown up to show you that you are doing that. And I promise you, if you focus on fixing that one piece and identifying where are you being that chronic complainer in your life, that will give you more than enough stuff that it won't even bother you. Like it won't even be an irritation. But this person is being an irritation to you because there's something it's reflecting within you. So yes, you can accept things and you can choose to let it go. You can shift your perspective and view that person as, hey man, that person must be going through a lot of shit, a lot of pain in their life to be in that state where they're struggling, that they feel their only outcome is to be able to bitch about it because they don't feel, the reason they're complaining about it is they don't feel that they can change their circumstances because if they did actually feel like they could change their circumstances, they would actually just change it. They, so they are complaining because they are stuck, that they don't know how to actually change this stuff. And so when you have a level of compassion and understanding, and because you've done your own inner work, it's not going to actually bother you. But if it is bothering you, I really invite you to look deeper because that is just the tip of the iceberg. Okay. Uh, Chief Wife Buffalo. <laughs> I love the name. Uh, sending you love to all those here in the family and friends. Uh, give the breath of life to all those here, family and friends. Beautiful. I love that. Thank you. Um, so, yes. Obviously, it's easy to let stuff go, but I promise you, if that stuff is irritating the shit out of you, um, then take a deeper look. That is an invitation for you to dive deeper and understand what's going on with you that this is irritating you. Okay? Because if you go down the road of like, you know what, I'm just going to accept it. Maybe it's your girlfriend that's always complaining and she's always bitching at you. And you're like, I'm just going to accept it. I just have to be more understanding. I just have to let it go and not let it bother me. Those are all good qualities. But if you do that stuff and you are actually denying how you truly feel that this is getting on your left nerve, right? Uh, I was going to say something else. <laughs> Um, but we'll keep it PG here, uh, mostly. <laughs> um, 
there was a, no, I gotta say, I gotta be me. Okay, so this is my transport logistics side. It's like, hey, if this is getting on your left nut or your left tit, whatever it is, <laughs> if it's driving you crazy, I invite you to actually take a look at that. What is it that's bothering you? Because the downside is if you um, go surface level and you're just like, ah, I'm just gonna let it go. It's not that important. How important is it? Uh, just, yeah, oh, that's just mom. That's just my girlfriend. She's just, uh, you know, I just have to be understanding. What's going to end up happening is if you're doing that out of denial of your own feelings, you will get to a point where you feel like you're invalidating yourself because you technically are invalidating how you actually feel and you will get to the point where there's a tipping point and you will blow up about stuff and you will lash back at somebody else because you've been training yourself that your feelings don't matter and then what ends up happening is you end up reacting and you take it out on the other person or maybe an innocent bystander or a brand new situation of the 20 times that somebody else did the exact same thing to you but you let it go but now this new person comes in and you're like Hi, I'm not taking this shit and you blow up at them and you've had enough and I've done that in my own personal relationship, uh, friendship. And I remember a friend of mine, um, we were still, we were just new as friends, um, but we hit it off, we were talking, we were opening up, all that kind of stuff. And I remember it got to a point where it's like, you know, every relationship, whether it's um, a friendship, uh, family, um, coworker, new job, new spouse, whatever it is, if you, you're going to go through this honeymoon phase, right? Where everything's just wonderful. You've hit it off. You you're, you're getting along well, you're having fun. Everything's great. And then the honeymoon phase ends and then you will start to see things where it's like, Oh, well, geez, I didn't notice that they like chew with their mouth open or like, geez, they make a lot of noise. And so like you're going to find little things about this person that's going to irritate the shit out of you. And um, that's okay. That's a normal part of the process and being able to understand what's going on here and being able to work through those things is really important because if you just let things slide all the time, you're going to end up blowing up. You're going to end up being irritated or you're going to just keep putting that stuff on yourself, letting it go, letting it go, letting it go to the point where you no longer feel heard, you no longer feel valid in the relationship, you feel like this is all one-sided and you're not getting anything out of this because you're denying your feelings and you did that not from a bad place. I mean, it's not a bad thing to not have to address every little thing and you have to learn that dichotomy you have to learn that balance of understanding is this something that i actually need to address or is this something i need to let go and that's the whole point that's the whole topic tonight to change or not to change do i actually need to make a change here or do i need to and what change do i actually need to to do do I just need to accept the situation that this is what it is and it's not something that needs to be changed and I can adapt and, you know, roll with the punches here? Or is this something I actually need to address? And how I like to look at this for myself is, um, is it bothering me? Is it actually bothering me? Now, if... So here's the thing, a good rule of thumb is anything beyond your finger, <laughs> your own fingers, your own personal physical body, most of the time, it has nothing to do with you. So if, if you look at somebody else's behavior and you're just like, man, why are they doing that? Like, it get, why are they behaving that way? It's so annoying, blah, blah, blah. At the end of the day, does that person's behavior actually impact your life? If not... That is a good rule of thumb to just let it go. If it is still bothering you, even when that person's not around, then that is the signal. What's going on with me that this is still bothering me, right? Um, if that person is no longer around and you're still 
because a lot of times it's too easy to just like, well, I'm going to cut this person out. I'm going to um, not deal with this. I'm going to leave this job and go get another one. I'm going to end this relationship and I'm going to find somebody better. I'm, you know, not going to talk to that family member, right? So sure, you can do that and that technically sometimes solves the problem, right? But if this is something that was supposed to be getting your attention for a lesson that you needed to learn, guess what? It's going to come back in another form. So you got rid of that employee, was just a pain in the ass. They were a constant whiner, complainer. They never performed, never hit their numbers, blah, blah, blah. You now bring in a new person. Guess what? The same problem happens and you're... Now you can go down the road of like, ah, we just can't find good people. These damn millennials, they never want to work hard, blah, blah, blah. Whatever it is that you want to subscribe to that particular narrative, you missed the lesson. But now, guess what? It doesn't just come back. If that person was at a volume 10, that was the problem. Guess what? You're now going to get somebody that comes in at... Uh, volume 12 or 15 or 20, depending on how urgent it is for you to get this lesson. Because everything, every person that comes into our life is an opportunity for us to grow. And sometimes it's like, you know, warmth and sunshine, and that allows us to grow, to blossom, to open up, to really feel fulfilled. Other times there's, you know, you get the cold, it's the winter time and you feel like you're dying, right? Um, and that is part of growth as well, right? Think of the four seasons, right? You, there's different things that happen um, in the fall. You need to plant, you need to harvest, well, you need to harvest, which is killing off and you reap the, the harvest, right? Um, but the next stage is those plants now have to die so that they can um, be reborn in the spring, right? And all of those stages, and then the growth period in the summertime, all of those stages have benefits and they also have pain attached to them as well, right? And wishing that you were in some other season than the one that you're currently in often is the source of the pain um, or the unhappiness. So being able to accept where you're at, the reality that you're currently in, and knowing you can gain a lot of happiness by knowing that you will not stay in that season, even though it may feel like a really long winter, even though you may, might be going like, man, this summer is so hot and my air conditioner's broke and it really sucks, right? You know, or you can complain about every season, right? You know, oh, the spring, everything's so dirty from the snow melting and now there's all this muck and there's this debris and now we have to clean and we have to prepare the soil and we have to plant and we have to do all these things. You can whine and complain about all of the stages. But that's not going to make you happy. So if you find that you have removed a person, you've removed a situation, you can change your environment. And oftentimes they call that a geographical cure. But the problem is, is wherever we go, there we are, right? So you will know soon enough, was it truly the other person that's the problem or has this resurfaced again and now that definitely is the thing that you need to do some inner work because this shit is still happening to you this is where you have to understand okay a change is required and you have to become aware of well what exactly do i need to change and then you need to understand why is it important for me to actually make these changes because change isn't easy. It's required. It's required, but it's not easy. And being able to understand why is it important to make these changes. And then once you understand why it's important, well, okay, well now what do I actually like do I know how to actually make the change, right? You know, how do I um, start?
stop falling into a relationship that is not good for me, right? How do I uh, lose the weight? How do I build more muscle? How do I fix whatever pain that was caused from the last time I went through this and I didn't get the lesson? Or actually, you did get the lesson. That is the lesson. See, life teaches us and it delivers the pain. And then we kind of have to go, okay, I got the test and now I get the lesson, right? So we get tested and it hurts and that gets our attention. And now that it has our attention, that is our catalyst. That is the thing that drives us to say, okay, I actually need to make a change here. And most of us don't pay attention to those changes until it's like deafening, right? The the noise is so loud. Now we're like, oh shit, now I really need to change. Because we, we saw it, but we're like, ah, it can't be that easy. Or no, nah, it's somebody else that's the problem. It's the job. It's the person. It's the thing, whatever. You know, when, once the kids leave or go to school, then it'll be okay, right? And we delay our happiness over and over and over again because we refuse to look at the things that we actually need to change. We f- refuse to take ownership ourselves. And so once we have the awareness of what it is that we need to change, why we need to change it, then how do we actually change it? What are the things that we, the tools that we need, the resources that we need, the processes that we need? How do we actually do this? And then okay, now that we've identified this process, it's like, well, um, okay, do I have the ability? Do I have the means? Do I have what I need to be able to make these changes? What kind of support do I need? Do I need a coach? Do I, like, you know, it's one thing to be aware of these things, but actually going through this process is something that is much more difficult. And this is where we need to identify our ability. It's like, okay, um, hey, I need to actually work out to be able to lose the weight, but I don't know what workout. So that's in the, the knowledge gathering. Okay, now I know the workout, but you know what? I have knee pain or I have lower back pain and I can't actually do that workout that they said. So now what do I do? Okay, um, now I have to go back to knowledge and find a different path to be able to do that. So sometimes these aren't very linear processes and they're a little bit more circular. Um, We have to understand, okay, I don't have the knowledge because I didn't realize that I didn't have the ability to do that particular workout. I thought, oh, okay. Or, you know what, it said to eat these foods, but I'm allergic or I can't freaking stand these foods and this isn't actually sustainable to me. So I don't have the ability to stick with it. So now I have to go back and find a different path. So sometimes you can kind of go back and forth and um, reinforcing or you might have thought, oh, you know what, I just need to change jobs. And when I get this new job, then everything's going to be fine. Or if I make more money, then everything's going to be fine. And then you find out, it's like, well, I did the thing, but I still have these feelings and these situations still keep popping up. Um, You know, I moved away from my hometown. And I thought if I moved to the city, everything would be better because I'd have more opportunity. And now you still find out that you're having challenges, you're having problems. It, The changes that you made didn't actually produce the results that you were hoping for. Uh, it didn't produce that happiness that you were hoping for. And then you might conclude that, well, I just can't be happy. Or, you know what, well, it is what it is and I just have to accept it. And it's more, uh, instead of an acceptance from a, uh, a love perspective, it's more an acceptance from a defeat perspective in, um, well, you know, it is just what it is. And if you're in that state, you're now settling, you're no longer looking for solutions, you're accepting things in a negative way, rather than in a positive way, that, um, that this is 
something I don't need to change because I was able to shift my perspective. I don't see it in the same light anymore. But if you can't do that, then you need to actually change the circumstances, the situation to get the desired results. So once you have that ability, then you have to go, okay, I know what I'm changing, I know why I'm changing it, I know how to change it, and I'm able to do this. So now it's a matter of reinforcing each one of those steps along the way of making sure that we can repeat and sustain the change until it becomes that this is just who I am and how I operate and this is just how things are because this actually works. This created the desired result. You're happier now. You're in a better relationship. You're in a better job and you feel an acceptance level, um, a peace, a love, a happiness, a joy, whatever it is, that this is actually working. You have that win, right? But if you are not able to get that win, get the result that you're actually looking for, then I invite you to go back to one of the previous steps to understand, okay, the changes that we made, it didn't actually produce the results. It's like, oh, I've put a lot of work into this, but we're not actually making more money. Uh, well, we changed the staff around and we restructured the company, but it still didn't produce the results that we're looking for. So now we have to go back and we have to dig deeper and understand, be aware of what the actual problem is. Because sometimes we just jump in and, you know, you've ever been in a meeting or you've had a friend that you're describing the problem and they're like, oh, you just need to do this, blah, blah, blah. And they spit out a solution. You're like, okay, you haven't actually heard everything that I was trying to say. I've had this when you go to a doctor, right? You're trying to explain what you've been going through and what kind of situations that you've been experiencing, what kind of symptoms that you've had. And they just jump in, maybe make assumptions, but you're like, no, I wanted to also tell you that I've tried these other things before. They didn't actually work for me, and this is the situation, right? So oftentimes people will jump in with their own assumptions based on what it is that they've gone through, what they think should fix it. And sometimes that works, and sometimes it's an easy solution to implement. But sometimes if you're going through more complex challenges, if you have um, past trauma, you have, um, you've repeatedly tried to solve the problem and haven't been successful at solving the problem, then it's one of these steps, one of these five situations that hasn't been able to be sustainable. So either you were unaware of what problem actually needed to be solved, maybe you focused on the wrong thing, you weren't actually solving the correct problem, you didn't dive deep enough to understand what the true problem actually was. Maybe it's not that important, you don't have a strong enough desire, or um, something else came along that was more important than the thing that you were trying to change. Um, it could be you don't know truly how to actually change the problem that you're facing. And that means now you need to find other avenues, other people, other resources to understand how do I actually change this, right? How do I actually fix this problem? Um, because this problem is going on, I know I need to change it, I know why I need to change it, and I, I really want to, but I don't know what or how to do that. Um, and then the ability of like, okay, well, I've identified that, you know what, I can... Um, do this and I need this kind of treatment, I need this kind of surgery, but I don't actually have the money to be able to do that. Now that's a different problem that's come up. So you have the awareness, the desire, the knowledge, and the 
but now you're stuck on the ability. You don't have the ability to execute on what it is that you know that you need to do. You, um, you know what it is that you need to do, but you don't, you're not able to execute. So that is an ability issue. And being able to address that are different challenges, different problems there that you have to dig up and understand. And then once you find what actually works for you, being able to repeat that process and having a predictable outcome, it's like, okay, yes, this is actually working and I know I've got the right solution in place and now all you have to do is repeat it on a consistent basis by reinforcing and going back to what was the driving force of why you were doing this in the first place and making sure that it's sustainable. If it becomes to the point where you are unable to sustain that, um, so example, somebody on, uh, you know, trying a new diet and they're like, oh, this is great, it's working for me. So for, I'll give you a personal example. So I, um, back in 2002, or 2001, 2002, I had lost a bunch of weight. I went from 300 pounds down to about 220. Um, and I did that following a low carb diet. And uh, of course, I was successful at losing weight. I found a partner and I started dating and ended up getting married. Um, and just being around that other person who was not eating low carb, caused me to go off the rails. I'm not blaming the other person, but having the additional temptation. It was easy for me to follow that plan when I was by myself because I had full control, but you introduce a new variable of having additional temptations. So I had focused more on the structure of being in control of that kind of stuff and then being put in a situation where I didn't have full control over that was the new variable that um, prevented me from that reinforcement of being able to continue along that process. I had a process that actually worked and I was able to follow that, but now with the new variables in play, that was a whole new challenge that got brought up that I wasn't very successful at adapting. And I not only went from 220, I went up to 400 pounds. So it was this boomerang effect that ended up happening. And so having to work my way back down through that um, and still finding this and each level, there's different challenges. So Right now, I'm at a new challenge. I'm, I'm at that 220, and I kind of keep bouncing back and forth between it, and I need to figure out what do I need to do to get to that new level because I know I'm aware of what I want to change. I'm aware of why I want to change it, and I'm aware of um, I have knowledge, I have ability to do that, but now I'm at this sticking point and now I have to kind of go back to the drawing board. I have to go back to knowledge again and understand what is the missing piece? What do I need to actually do differently for this particular situation? Because what had worked up to the point that I'm at now, it's stopped working. It's not as effective. Um, so even though I'm doing the same things that I was doing, I need to look and tweak some of this stuff so that I can continue on the journey to be able to get the results that I ultimately want. So being able to understand those kind of things. So even as you go along, you can have all of those right things in place, but there will be new variables that get thrown at you and it breaks the system, it breaks the process and being able to adapt to the change and be able to re react to that in a positive way um, is really important because if you are not able to do that, if you are not able to adapt and pivot and make the changes necessary, then what happens is emotions kick in and then you start having fear and doubt, well, whether or not you can actually do something rather than looking at the situation of, okay, some new variables have been presented and now I need to adapt and modify 
and we have to kind of go through this whole change management process again, dealing with the feelings because now there's doubt, there's uncertainty of, well, can I actually get to the goal, the thing that I thought I wanted? And if you let the fear and doubt creep in, then what will end up happening is you're going to revert back to a known behavior that was working and you will go back to. So this happens a lot of times too when you have new system implementations. People will go along, they're all hyped up, you've done the right communication, they really want the change, they're going through the system, they're doing the things and then they hit roadblock. And they don't know how to deal with those roadblocks. So then they revert back to old behaviors. Example, they know that they want to use the new system, the new technology that you spent millions of dollars implementing and rolling out the training and all of that kind of stuff. And then what happens is they get stuck. They can't do a certain thing that they were used to doing. The new system maybe doesn't allow for it or they don't know how to find it in the system and they revert back to, well, I know I still need to do the thing. I still need to get this done, so I'm going to go back to using a spreadsheet, and I'm going to track this on the spreadsheet, and then the, but you don't know that that's happening, that they're still just doing stuff, and it's kind of flying under the radar, and then next thing you know, you're like, well, why are we not seeing the return on the system? Why are we not seeing the data that we thought we were supposed to be getting? And it's like, well, people stopped doing this and they started doing another way because they didn't know how to solve the problem. And so now you don't get the return on your system. People aren't going to tell you that because they're afraid because they know if they don't use the system, they're going to get in trouble but they're hiding those kind of things. And so now you have all of these other things that start falling off in your business. You don't get the data, you don't get the information, you don't get the communication, all of that kind of stuff because a lot of times people do not want to admit they don't know how to do stuff, so they will hide it. And depending on how they were treated either in a previous environment, um, you know, how they were treated. If they have trauma growing up, they had a super critical parent and they were taught to hide their mistakes because if they opened up and they told somebody that they didn't know how to do something or they did it wrong, they were punished, right? And that kind of programming is all through every business everywhere that or maybe the only way that they learned how to survive that is to be able to put the blame on somebody else if i could blame my brother for doing this then i wouldn't get in trouble so maybe not only do they lie or hide maybe it's an error of omission but they actively try to sabotage somebody else to take the fall for it and you know, there's those kind of behaviors that end up happening in your business. And now you're not actually dealing with real problems. You're dealing with all these other fake smokescreen kind of problems. And that costs your business a huge amount because um, if you're not dealing with reality, you can't actually solve the true problem. So you're running around putting all these things and these uh, band-aids in place. And this is where you have to end up looking at things and really, truly understanding what is going on um, and what are the things that you actually need to change because that is um, something that you, if you're not dealing with reality, you can't actually change things. So now you have a bunch of people within your organization that are denying the real problems. And this is where you end up having toxicity that ends up showing up in your business and you don't see it until it becomes this huge problem, right? And um, so being able to cultivate a culture where you are trauma aware because 
even if you haven't been through trauma, being aware how people react, how they um, deal with this kind of stuff, what kind of behaviors can come up around that. Sure, you can put all kinds of rules and structures in place to, you know, tell people what this is not acceptable and blah, 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 all of that kind of stuff. But it still doesn't get to the root cause and then you have all this surface level and all you've done is force it underground and now you really can't actually deal with the problem because everybody's just smiling and nodding and you're surrounded by a bunch of yes men and you cannot get to the truth. Everybody's hiding it because they're too afraid to actually challenge somebody. And whether that is something that is, you could be the perfect boss. You could be the perfect leader. You've done absolutely everything right. You've created a culture of openness, honesty. Everybody can communicate, all that kind of stuff. But people, if your team doesn't know how to deal with their own inner emotions because you don't know how to do that and you've just focused on the external, okay, we've, we've, we've created these team meetings, we've created this feedback loop that you can open up, you can tell us everything honestly and everything, but you haven't addressed the emotions in the organization. You haven't addressed people's fears around this and you haven't removed those fears and you haven't taught people how to remove their own fears, it is going to cost you in your business. And you're like, but Tina, this isn't my responsibility. How is this my thing? Like, can't they just deal with their own trauma? This is a business that I'm trying to run for crying out loud. I don't have time for this kind of stuff. Uh huh. Well, if you don't, make the time, then eventually you will get to the point where it will be something that you have to deal with, whether you like it or not. And it's going to come up at the worst possible time. It's no different because it's funny because I know how entrepreneurs think they work. They will focus on their money, their KPIs, their health, all of this kind of stuff, and they know that that's important, but they will ignore all of the emotions, ignore all of that kind of stuff, and think that, well, if the team would just perform, then I wouldn't be so anxious. I wouldn't be so angry all the time. I wouldn't have to micromanage all this stuff. I wouldn't have to jump in. I wouldn't have to, you know, hire all of these experts to come in and solve these problems, right? Because if they just did what we needed to do and they got the results, then we wouldn't have these problems. Well, there's always going to be problems in business. That's the whole point of a business existing is to solve problems, right? If you don't solve a problem, you won't exist as a business. And if you don't learn to adapt and change, then you won't exist as a business. So being able to do the inner work for yourself so that you can lead in a way that helps other people because you're leading by example, that you are not in denial of your own feelings. And if you're not in denial of your own feelings, you're open to them. You're not afraid of them. You're not trying to avoid them. You're not trying to discount them. Because if you are doing that on any level within yourself, then you are bringing that energy. Your team will do what you do, not what you say just like kids. <laughs> kids will do what you do, not what you say. You can tell a kid not to swear all day long, but if you're walking around and you're saying, fuck this, fuck that, shit, damn, whatever, I can promise you the kid is going to do that. Watch TikTok videos of little kids swearing, most hilarious thing you've ever seen. <laughs> and you know that it's the parent. Um, Anybody watch the Christmas story, you know, where the dad's always swearing and the poor kid, Ralphie, has to eat, get his, uh, 
get his mouth washed out with soap and everything. And uh, they blame the other kids at school that it was the other kid that made his this kid swear. And it's like, no, it's like his dad that's down there raging at the furnace and, you know, the, the neighbor's dogs that are always coming in and causing a ruckus and all of that kind of stuff. And it's that, it's like, so he hears his dad swearing all the time. Well, guess what? The kid's going to swear. They will do what you do, not what you say. So if you are not doing this inner work, you are not taking responsibility for your own emotions. Therefore, your team will not take a responsibility for their own emotions. So learning how to do this, bringing this to your business and bringing that to your environment is going to help you grow. It's going to help your business grow. It's going to help the people that are in your organization grow. And even though you're not responsible for the therapy, these new behaviors, guess what? They're going to be able to take that back to their family, their family life. And they're going to operate differently within their families. And that's going to have a positive impact. Because if some, if one of your employees, their home life is not a happy home life, Yes, you might get them in the office more. Maybe they'll work a little bit harder because they don't want to go home. They don't want to have to face things. But if they are denying this and they are using work as a way to cope with the negativity that's going on at home, then what's going to end up happening is their relationship's going to fall apart at home. And then when the fallout of that happens and they're extremely unhappy because now their marriage fell apart, their kids aren't uh, behaving or they're getting into trouble because they weren't able to spend the time with them to help show them emotionally how to deal with things, their lives fall apart. And I can promise you that's going to end up impacting your business as well. Because now you have somebody that's even in more pain because they were in denial of the pain for so long and they didn't know how to address it emotionally. They're going to bring that to the office. They're going to bring that to their work. Maybe, maybe it's in a small way. Maybe you have a really high performer and maybe because of the pain that they're going through, their productivity slows down a little bit and they're operating maybe as a B player or a C player. Um, God forbid, maybe even a D player, right? Depending on how big the pain was that they were going through. And now you have some challenges that, hey, this was somebody that was a really strong A player, but now their performance has gone down. And if you don't know how to deal with the emotions of it, you may address the situation incorrectly in a way that doesn't actually support them. And then it causes them to slide down further and then further again. And now you end up losing somebody who was a valuable asset to your company. And it became something, yeah, you can blame them while well, they weren't performing. And um, you know what? The, you know, we just, we tried everything that we could do and we had to let them go ultimately. And I would suggest that there's still some things that either maybe, yes, it was time for them to move on, but you could have possibly salvage that relationship had you known how to do the inner work yourself. It, it's no different than when you know how to solve a particular challenge within the business because you've done it so many times that you could step in easily. You can guide somebody. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what? Oh, uh, the reason that that ends up happening is because of these three things. When you fix these three things, everything will flow smoothly again. Same thing with inner work. If you're able to understand your emotions to that level, you can guide somebody very easily on how to get through that process, how to deal with things properly. And when you teach them that, maybe their marriage wouldn't have fallen apart. Maybe their kids wouldn't have got into trouble. Because you, as a business owner, set an example. You create an environment where everybody in the company operates from that kind of thing. And 
in this way, you can potentially have the ability to heal somebody's trauma that you didn't cause, but you created an environment where they now feel safer. They feel like they can actually grow in your company. They got the things that they never experienced in their childhood or they, or in maybe their past um, toxic work environment. And now you become this beacon, this beacon of light, this beacon of change that, and when you cultivate that kind of loyalty, that kind of love, because you poured into somebody, you provided them a solution that they had no chance of learning on their own. And you do that in a way that brings out the best in somebody. I promise you that person will go, they will fight tooth and nail. They will be so loyal to you and your company that they will never want to leave. And I know it's customary these days to think, oh, you know what, you, it's just a numbers game. People are only going to stay with you so long. No, you should be looking at things a little bit differently. You should be looking at every person that comes into your organization, whether that's a customer, because you don't want to lose your customers and you work really hard to do that. And it's much easier to sell to an existing customer by being able to solve another problem that they have, right? Another challenge that they have. And you want to be able to offer that solution to them. It's much easier to hit the existing list. Same thing with employees. It's much easier to keep existing employees and they know the culture, they know the changes and having to go out and replace employees. If you have a high turnover rate, you definitely have a change management challenge that actually needs to be addressed. If you're frustrated all the time in your business or you're frustrated with your staff, maybe you think that you could probably do more, I can promise you, you can do more, especially if you preemptively don't wait for it to become a big blowout because if you were listening to the chat that I did last night, I provided examples of where they brought in all kinds of um, heavy hitters, they went to headhunters, they bought in the best of the best people to solve these problems that they were having because they were at risk of losing the accounts. And now the, the two customers were so frustrated that, oh, now we have to try and fix it. And it's no different than if you didn't realize that there were problems in your marriage and now you run around trying to do everything that they wanted and now it just seems like it's not enough. Well, the same thing happened in a business where they ran around. We finally got the results that they were that were originally promised to them in the beginning and it still didn't end up making a difference because the emotional components were not addressed and the trust wasn't rebuilt and ended up losing out. And you're like, ah, you know what, Tina, that's just too hard. That's too much work. And you know what, I'm just going to let them, just let them go and I'll just hire somebody new. And I, hey, I actually, I ended up working out much better because I hired this new person, they work for less money, so and they work harder, they're willing to prove themselves, and you know what, some companies, that is actually a strategy. But you can't, here's the problem. So I've been in a company where um, when somebody gets to, oh, oh, sorry, so when somebody gets to a certain number of years of service and they had certain packages that they had to pay out, well, that was going to get really, really expensive and it seemed like a great idea at the time. And so what they ended up doing was packaging a whole, they implemented a new system and then packaged and laid off a bunch of people that were getting up there in their years of service. And so... Um, yeah, they saved on the bottom line on the P&L. They could see that they had a savings by letting these people go early. 
but there was a huge emotional cost that they didn't factor in at all because you can't put a freaking KPI to it. But I can promise you it demoralized the people that were left behind that were maybe at their 10 year, um, 12 year mark. And they're like, huh, when I get up to the 20 year mark, when I get up to the 25 year mark in this company, they're going to treat me like I'm disposable. Why should I put in so much effort? And nobody's actually going to come out and actually say that. But that's the chat that happens around the water cooler. That's the emotional stuff that never gets factored into those kind of decisions. And there is a cost to that. It costs your business dearly. And no different than this happens in relationships as well, right? We stop putting in that effort. We stop putting in the work. We stop putting in uh, the stuff that obtained us uh, that new customer. We stop putting in the effort of serving that customer as if they were the first customer that we got. Well, that first customer gets so much attention, right? That you over deliver, you do that kind of stuff. Well, that becomes hard to sustain sometimes. And the excitement of it wears off, right? And you just get used to that customer being there. And, and then you start to settle. Well, if you're subtle, you're, you're coasting. If you're coasting, you're going downhill, right? And not putting in that effort with that customer and you lose that customer. Well, now that customer goes out and goes, eh, you know, it wasn't that big of a deal. Or even if they don't say anything negative, they're definitely not saying anything positive either. They're not helping you generate more customer leads, more referrals, and they may not say anything. Maybe they're polite, maybe they're nice, and they're just, uh, you know, uh, I got what I needed out of it. It's not a big deal. I moved on. I went to this other company. I went and did this other thing. You've lost that customer. The likelihood they might come back if maybe you put on a big promotion. Um, and same thing with your employees too, right? You lose the ability to have your team and build that team up and that you have that historical data to um, show that those leaders now show the new people the way, right? And being able to build those kind of things up. So to change or not to change, that is the question. Understanding whether or not it's just a perspective shift or it's a major change. And a lot of times, unfortunately, human nature, we don't pay attention to the small stuff, the early warning signs, um, and we wait until things become a huge problem and we are forced to change. And that is uncomfortable. And it's oftentimes because we haven't done the inner work. Because when you actually do the inner work and you dig deep, and you figure this stuff out, you are going to notice those early warning signs like this, and you're going to jump on it, and it's going to prevent a lot of problems from happening in your business because you know how to identify them, you know what to look for, how to look for that, why it's important to fix it right away rather than letting it slide. And when you have that kind of culture in your company, that's going to that is a game changer because now everybody is going to start to operate that in that way. Or you can wait until, ah, uh, you know what, we're just in this numbers, 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 cutthroat, cut, cut, cutthroat kind of thing, just biggest, baddest in the game. And then you have to bring in all these experts to actually change your culture because once they stop fighting the good fight, guess what? They start turning on each other internally. Now you have all these battles happening. Yeah. I've seen this many, many times over in different companies. And then there's this whole restructuring, these change, or implement this new system, and that's going to be perfect. If you can actually just get to a place where you are understanding the inner work, people know how to take accountability for themselves. You do that yourself as a business owner, as a leader, as a CEO, manager, whatever it is that you actually do. And even if you don't have one of those titles, it doesn't mean that you can't be a leader 
by doing this kind of stuff. I did the stuff and I brought this to whatever work environment I was in and it helped me be an extremely valuable member of the team because I knew how to manage emotions. I knew how to shift people's perspective from skeptical, from mistrusting and not uh, being open to ideas. And this is how I was able to close a lot of deals in my career. I was able to help people transition to buy into whatever idea, project, or situation that we were having, whether it was a small one or a larger one, and being able to shift those perspectives to get alignment, to get cooperation, to be on the same page, the same team, and build that and get everybody moving in the same direction. Being able to do that even if you don't have a title, is huge. It makes you an extremely valuable asset to whatever organization that you happen to partner with. And being able to bring that um, helps you grow and it helps the people around you grow because you bring a different energy to the situation. And um, that energy is contagious. And being aware of your energy and if you are operating in fear, even if you say all the right things and you give it lip service, it won't actually make the changes at a deeper level because you haven't addressed the fear that's within you and you bring that fearful energy to the situation and people start acting out in that energy. And you as a leader have way more power than you think that you do. And even if you think that you're hiding this stuff, well, that's even worse because they pick up on the energy of hiding. <laughs> they pick up on the energy of hiding and now they start hiding stuff from you. And then until you realize that, you know, there's been this leak behind the wall that all of a sudden now you have a black mold issue that you is going to cost you a lot of money to fix because you didn't know what was going on behind the scenes, right? So, guys, wow. Geez, when I start talking about the trauma stuff and I relate it to a business situation, it seems like I have a whole lot more to share. Um, I hope you guys find this valuable um, and that you are getting something from this. And um, for those of you that don't know, a couple of things. I do upload the recordings onto my YouTube channel, which is Coach Tina B125. Feel free to go over there. Make sure you tap on the subscribe button so that you are notified when I've uploaded a new video. Um, and for those of you that are watching and paying attention and stuff like that, I will be launching a new coaching program that will show you these tools that will help you and that'll start on an individual basis and I'll be launching that on my birthday which is April 17th that's coming up very very soon uh, seven days oh damn <laughs> so I'm gonna have to uh, get some things put together it will be I will be offering some beta pricing so this will be the lowest um, that you will ever be able to get the program at if you feel that this is something that would help you either personally or professionally to be able to operate in a happier energy, um, a happier way of being. And you bring that energy to the people around you. Um, it's going to help hit that goal of helping a million people heal past trauma by um, you being an example you doing the inner work and then being able to help the people around you, whether that's your significant other, your family, your friends, your coworkers, your company, your business. These tools will be things that you can use in all areas of your life. So guys, with that, I'm going to wrap up tonight and we will talk to you again tomorrow. I hope you found this useful. I hope you found it informative and helpful. I do come on every night, so please come back again tomorrow, and um, 
make sure if you're watching me on TikTok, subscribe um, so that you get notifications when I've gone live. Uh, same thing with Facebook, um, you'll get notifications when I go live. Um, so have a great night, guys, and we will see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.